what I got, I'll give to you. Oh, the platinum trio's back on you hoes. So crack a bottle. <laughs> Trying to give you some sort of broad overview of the sonic resources. Synthesizer is any sound, any instrument that creates a sound electronically. Uh, old oscillator style instruments. Oh. This thing has waveforms and filters. Mm -hmm. Shape these sounds. Shape them. So we, we create sounds with these. So the, a synthesizer can have waveforms and create very synthy, electronic sounding things like that. Or it can be loaded up with samples of real sounds. Uh -huh. Some of these things have hard drives inside of them which have sounds of a, of a real oboist playing. Or a car crash. Or a helicopter. Or a child crying. I mean anything. Any sound has become potential musical material today. It opens up inside of your software. We're musicians here. We've all studied, we've analyzed Bach and Beethoven, we've taken harmony, counterpoint ear training. So we're all trained really to have this very holistic approach to music where you can hear something and I can write it down. If okay. you sing me a melody, I can sit here with a piece of paper and I can write that melody down for you and hand it to you. Okay. If I look, if you hand me a melody written on paper, I can look at it and I can hear it in my head by looking at it. Yeah. This is the sort of training that we go through. It's called ear training. And, and the ultimate aim for a musician at, and this is fairly intense place, the aim for my goal for them, and, I, and our philosophy is you should be able to look at something and hear it. You should be able to hear something and see it. Well, it depends on what level of play you are. If you're beginning, you're still dealing with the notes and how you're fingers feel that you've got a physical memory like an athlete, you know, not just a mental recognition of the notes on the page, but how your body needs to be in position to make it happen. Um, and then the emotions and the interpretation are beyond that. But once a lot of people memorize the music, they get beyond the music and uh, they really do feel it and oh, it could be related to what they're feeling right then themselves or what the music inspires. There's one that's very unpleasant but it's very real and the music did draw from me a personal awareness it was music that I hated mm -hmm. at Severance Hall. It was, uh, I can't even remember exactly what the piece was, like Ruggles or Tippet, or it was something new and contemporary and abrasive and aggressive. And I somehow or other uh, got so stirred up. I was trying to escape from it and just turn away from it. But it stirred up the feelings in me so strongly that I had had the same feelings personally about something that, uh, you know, interpersonal relationship, and it had stirred me up equally, so it brought that memory back to me. But now I was an adult and not uh, almost a child, and I had coping mechanisms that I didn't have then, and all of a sudden I understood what was happening. <laughs> Are my shelter from the storm? I am your garden of Are all the cool leaves have torn? I am the peace you write. You are the branches of a tree. I am a clinging vine. I am a friend to whose summer. I think singing 
for all all people, you know, religious groups, there are people who are not affiliated with any religious group. I think singing is a very spiritual thing. I mean, it's, right. you know, when people, when I, w I used to be a, when I was in college, I was at the Conservatory of Music in Cincinnati, and people would meet me, and they'd say, where do you go to school? And I'd tell them, they'd say, oh, what instrument do you play? And I would say, I play the voice. <laughs> I was a voice major, you know, so um, the difference between, you know, singing and any other kind of instrument is that you know, if I'm if I'm having um, a a day where maybe I have a cold or some allergy issues, if I'm a pianist, I can still play the piano probably. Mm -hmm. it might affect me a little bit, you know, because my head might feel stuffy. But I can still play the piano. I can still play my violin. Mm -hmm. Maybe blowing a trumpet or a flute might be a little challenging with a cold. But if I'm a singer and I'm sick, you know, it's like it's a very emotional thing for me because I can't do what right. I need to do, right? Um, and singing, because it comes from inside of you, it's, you know, I think it enhances the spirituality of the experience. So whether you're singing rock and roll or opera or, or pop or whatever, singing is a very physical thing, but it's a very mental and emotional thing. Okay. So when you take that and apply it to any type of liturgical music, whether it's in a church or a synagogue or a mosque or, or anywhere, um, I think that the singing of the prayers takes the prayers up to a higher level. You know, when I make a hospital visit, um, I think everybody probably has their own style. I try not to push people into talking about something they don't want to talk about. Mm -hmm. I go to visit people. Sometimes I know exactly, and we know what they're dealing with. Sometimes we just hear somebody's in the hospital, but we don't have any more information. Mm -hmm. We don't know it's because um, they had a, you know, a severe ear infection or if it because it's something, some kind of a terminal disease. So... Um, when I go to visit somebody, I know immediately if I'm going to find out why they're there. Because if they don't feel like talking about it, um, I, I don't push it. You know, I might say, so, you know, why, why are you here? Why are you in here? And they might just say, oh, I'm just, I'm, I'm humming along. I'll be fine. Well, that's a clear indication. Don't ask again. You know, they, whatever it is, they don't want to talk about it. Most people do want to talk about it. And when I'm there, I, you know, I always say, well, you know, is there anything you want to hear? Would you like Would you like a little song maybe to make you cheer you up? A little prayer for healing. A lot of times people want me to sing Mishabera to them, you know. Mm. So um, sometimes I do that. But once, <laughs> more than once in a while, somebody will say, you know what? I really love um, Rodgers and Hammerstein musicals. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, they'll and 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 I'm like, hey, that's my old life. I'm, you know, I can do that. So sometimes people will ask me to sing a song that, you know, they dance to at their wedding. At, you know, and if I know it, I sing it. Um, but sometimes they want to hear like an Ose Shalom or Misha Berach. And, um, and I sing it to them. And for some reason, it, it seems to make them feel comforted. That's you know, we hope and pray that the prayers are heard and that it helps. As I say, it can't hurt, you know, right. but so we, we pray that it helps. An orchestra playing in its absolute top form, that top form is really like an organism. Um, it ceases to be a group of a hundred people that becomes one, one common mind that's reacting in the moment to each other uh, in a nonverbal way, which is a terribly fascinating concept. I remember the Friday after 9-11. We didn't make any special announcements, and we could have because we have email to all of our congregation, but the place just, people just kept coming. They needed to pray, and they needed to be able to raise their voice together. And the best way for people, instead of everybody talking at the same time, to be singing on this, you know, at the same time, it creates a, a it has a power to it. It uh, it offers more than words do. It goes beyond. It just is such a strong force of communication and of emotion, and uh, the world needs that.